on. Boom. Damn, you gonna kill the you gonna kill my lady the whole time? The whole I'm interview? Not. I'm not. <laughs> Boom, we back in this bitch, number one podcast in the earth. And today we have Dre V, aka Simba. Motherfucking Dre V, aka Simba oh, cool. Dragstar, you bitch ass niggas. It's good to see you. It's good to see you here. It's good to see you. Um, how you feeling, nigga? Oh, roll the intro. How you feeling? I'm feeling great, bro. I'm in like, I'm really at a super like, superior point at my young career as an artist. Like, I'm really at that little like middle ground between going from just being that nigga that rap or that nigga that make music to like actually, you know, taking this shit serious and really doing that shit, you know? Mm, how long, how long you feel like you've been in this mood? Um... Honestly, for like the past two years, but I really super like started to find a, a sound I really fuck with and like I really started to lock in over the past like last year. Like that pandemic, yo, that shit really like it really kicked in a high gear for me on like the music tip. Like it might have fucked up a lot of shit and it might have, like, I don't know, that shit was just hard on everybody, you know, being, being stuck in the house and shit like that. But for okay. me... Like it just it kind of had me stuck in my notes. Like I was just writing a lot, and I and I was like creating a lot, and that shit really. When did you start? When did you shit. start writing your music? I remember you used to freestyle. Uh well, like I see, I kind of was like freestyling and writing the whole time. Like I mean, I've been writing music since I was like thirteen, and I started off like that shit was like just an, a way for me to express myself, and like um, you know, kids be they be cruel, bro. And, like, I went through a lot of fucked up shit with friends and shit like that and trying to just meet so many people because, you know, I was a real, like, happy people person type of kid. Yeah. And, um, like, writing music just really helped me express myself in a way where I could, like, get that shit out. Even if it wasn't good enough to maybe record at the time when I was young, mm-hmm. I was, like, that shit was really helping me a lot. I started recording myself when I turned, like, 16, probably, like, yeah, like, 16, 17. I was, like, recording myself and shit. And then, you know, I used to rap with a different, um, with a group of niggas. So tell and, me, wait, yeah. wait, wait, you running too fast. Tell me, tell oh. me, what was, <laughs> you already answered like four questions for me, nigga. But um, <laughs> what what was going on in, well, like, so you said you started at like 13, right? Mm-hmm. So what was going on in your, in your life around in the midst? Like, let me start writing some All right, shit. yeah, let's slow it down. Um, well, it was more so like, I was that kid that was always happy as shit and thought that the world was like, Disney Channel or something, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and that shit, like, it's cool because you be, you be, you know, you be running around and you be trying to make all these friends and all that type of shit, but then, like, the real world really smacks you in the face and you start realizing, like, because that shit happens early. Like, I learned a lot of the lessons I learned that I know now and the things that I, the way I move, how I move is because of the shit that happened, like, back then, you know? Yeah. And it was just a lot of, like, uh, like, little messy things that were going on in my life that, like, really shaped me into being a man later on down the line. And that shit translated to me making music because it was, like, that was the best way I could expre- express and explain that shit. Because, like, it's real hard to just, like, be expressing your feelings and shit. Did you drop, Did you drop like, the like the first song you made? Did you drop it? Or like, nah. So or actually, no, wait. You know what? The first, all right, no, not the first song I made because I made, I've always been, like, a super writer, so I always wrote, like, hundreds of songs because i just be writing all my thoughts down you know i probably didn't I, I dropped the first song i ever recorded though no cap i dropped that shit on soundcloud that was the first song i ever recorded and then i dropped like well, what was the name of it uh it's called damn i don't even get niggas that we're gonna go find that bitch it's called the reality uh, i ain't telling niggas this, this this you know what i can say this shit exclusively because it don't matter because you niggas not gonna find it because you don't even know what the title of my uh what my rap name was back then, so niggas ain't gonna find that shit. Mm. That shit was called The Reality. That shit was so fun. That shit's such a joke, man. Oh, so you had another rap name other than Simba? Yeah, hell yeah, bro. I, the Simba shit I came up with once I got into like 11th, 12th grade, because I was like, shit, nigga, my shit getting kind of hard. I need to like, I was always just fumbling the name thing. Like, that was one of the little, because nigga, I wasn't trying to be a rapper to be a rapper. Like, I was, like I said, expressing myself. So, yeah. Me actually trying to like create this shit was kind of hard because it was like, nigga, I'm just being me. That's kind of where the Simba shit ended up correlating to now into Dre V because it's like, mm. that's my name. Like, I am Dre. Like, that's people personally know me by that. So it like, so that you, shit is more of a strong, you know what I'm saying? So you feel like you're gonna have a strong connection, change your shit from a stage? Yeah, like, you know, artists do that. Like, we, a lot of artists got multiple aliases. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, I, I ain't, I don't really got, 
too many on the top of my head I can Yo, think of. So, but. so do you still like so? Like, like, they walk up on you and be like, "Hey, Simba," like, would you? Do yeah, that? I'm cool with that. Like, you know, what I'm saying I'm not gonna disrespect a nigga that only know me by a certain name. You know what I'm saying? But because like people that's really in my life in my life still call me Simba. Like, it's more like a it's still a name that I carry, and it's still like it's kind of like a nickname now at this point because I'm growing from it. So it just became one of my aliases. Like, if you know me by that, you know me by that. If you know me by Dre, you know me by Dre, you know what I'm saying? Tell me what the fuck, where did you get this whole Dre thing from? I'm over this bitch trying to look up your music. <laughs> uh, Dre V, uh, shout out to my homie Sko. Shout out Sko. Yeah, shout out Sko. Yo, uh, he, when me and him were just sitting down one day, and like, he was just like, bro, you need to, because like, my shit is getting real good now. My shit getting like super polished, you know what I'm saying? So he like, yo, you need to really polish everything. Like, If you're going to start turning this shit up, then turn that shit up all the way and don't hold back. Like. And he was just like, yo, I think you should call yourself Dre V. Like, like that shit just sounds stronger. It's an abbreviation of your actual name. Like, it just makes a lot of sense to, like, what you got going on. You switching your sound up. It's like, time to switch it up, bro. Like, niggas already know you as Simba. Simba already put in his, the groundwork. Now you got to use Dre V to really push you over that border. And I'm, you know what I'm saying? Shout mm-hmm. out to Skull. We definitely had that conversation. That shit definitely helped. Who is Skull to you? Skull, my boy. Uh, a lot of people, you might know him, Skull Murder, 808 Skull. He, uh, look him up on Instagram. It's the Instagram name's his handle, 808 Sco. He uh we, we grew up together, like we just we yeah, we've been tight for a long time and it so, just so happened that he ended up doing the music thing and like it was oh, just so crazy. He yeah, he produces it and it's like it's funny because he like I never really knew that he was gonna be into that type of shit. Like he was always kind of an athlete or just like doing his own little thing. I never knew that he was gonna be into the same thing I was, and then it's funny how we getting older now and he truly in it, like he in that shit, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Okay. That shit, that shit hard. All right, so all right, so how so how old are you, JV? Twenty three. Twenty three. That's a lot of time we didn't talk about. Talk about your childhood. Let's talk about your. All right, yeah, let's get into it. Uh, so we already talked about when I was like thirteen. That's when I first started writing and shit. I got a little older. I turned like fifteen, sixteen. You know what I'm saying? Shit. Nigga, was... Wait, wait, wait! You skipped thirteen years. Go back to when you was zero, like. Your oh, oh, you want to know about like back in the who back is in the G. JV? We trying to find out, <laughs> nigga. <laughs> I bet. Um. Like, when I was a kid, bro, everything felt like a movie. Like, mm-hmm. everything was real nostalgic. Like, that's, how, that's like, the best I can really put that shit into any kind of, like, word. It's, like, super nostalgic. Like, I was in the best of both worlds, bro. I had, my mom's side was, like, had, they kind of had it, I'm saying, had money or, like, just, it was just different. You know, I'm white and black. And my dad's side, it was more so, like, the hood, and it was more so, like, it, just, it was, like, a lot more raw. Like it was a lot more real, you know? And so I had I the best of... I know he was white and black. Yeah, hell yeah. Shit. So I got best of both worlds. That's why I call myself a hybrid, because I don't just have, like, one way of thinking. Like, I've seen a lot of shit, and I've seen, a, like, the both sides of things, and it's like, that shit, that shit pretty cool, yeah. So when I was a kid, I, like, I kind of had everything that I wanted to an extent, but I didn't. Like, it wasn't like I was one of them, like, super... Spoiled rich kids, but at the same time, I wasn't no like super poor ass nigga either. Like, both my parents had a cool house I could I could live in. Like, it wasn't like we was living on some super struggle shit or nothing like that. Like, we it, I was good for real. Like, I was cool. Mm-hmm. Childhood was okay. Like, I ain't really go too far away from Baltimore. I'm be real. Like, I ain't never been on a plane still to this day. Like, I got you know what I'm saying. I got go some go some places, but you should. Oh, definitely. What do you have? Like, do you have an idea? Like, where you want to go to? Hell yeah, bro. I, I want to travel the world, bro. I want to take this shit everywhere. Like, like even like, like back to being when I was a kid. Like, I used to always like this shit that I'm chasing now seems so incredibly untouchable when I was young. Like, I used to watch MTV and like watch like uh, hella videos on YouTube and all that shit. Like, uh, what's that shit they used to drop that shit on the, the Vivo channel or whatever on YouTube? <laughs> Hell you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, I used to like I used to be literally thinking like, who, how the fuck are these niggas doing this shit? Like. This shit is like a movie, bro. Like, like I, I said, like a movie. Like it is. Like it's like a fucking, like that. That shit doesn't even seem real, bro. It doesn't seem like. How do you get to the point where you can't even go to the grocery store? You can't even like, you can't even be in public for longer than fifteen minutes without people bum rushing you. Like, yeah. You got millions and millions of people actually like hearing your voice and. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you got so this that, platform. So that type of attention always has your attention since a young age. Like yeah, that. like, ever since I was young, I was just like, damn, like, you niggas hard as shit. Like, y'all like superheroes. Like, so how the fuck you do this shit? Like Superheroes, I like that. Hell yeah, bro. Real shit. Mm-hmm. It got realistic to me once I started noticing hella people that I even I know was doing it. Like, I was like, damn, like, nigga, we went to school together, and you, like, you lit. Like, shit, who the say I can't do that shit, bro? Like, what the fuck? Like, 
niggas that's a, younger than me, fuck the same age, niggas younger than me is like on, super on. You Hell know what yeah. I'm saying? Like that shit is like, damn, I bet like we can do this shit. Yeah, you just gotta believe, bro. All right, so we grew up. We talked about your childhood. Now we at thirteen. So, All right, yeah. So let's talk skip. about these groups, rap groups you was in. All right. Well, so my first rap group I was in uh, was called ATM. What's that? Addicted to Money. <laughs> and we was cool. You know what I'm saying? We went through a lot of shit. Um, but it was really a birth period to becoming who I became once I got out of the group. Because it was like we all grew up together. So I saw rapping together was like super organic because we all lived, basically lived around the same neighborhood. Like, some yeah. of us live right up the street from each other, you know? And so, so how did that, like, you said you had to left, was that, did y'all leave on good terms? Like, how was that, like, how, tell, tell us about I that ain't going to say too much about what really went down in the in-betweens, but oh. it's, 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 it's not like any, all of us still pretty much speak to each other. It's not like no bad blood or nothing. It's just, we all went through so much shit together and apart that we grew apart and then now we're all just doing whatever we're doing. Like, it's either you, you know, you, you might be doing this or doing that, but we all still kind of keep communication and shit. We just not a, really not a group no more. That shit, yeah. It'd be like that. That's how shit happens. You grow, you grow past things, you know? Yeah, the Migos not going to be together forever. <laughs> the Migos. <laughs> yo. <laughs> the Migos. Nah, them niggas might stick together. Them niggas hard. But yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. I don't really tell them like that, but they is definitely hard. All right, so you 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 in ATM, you went. You, so what what happened through that that made you feel like you got those first birth marks of being an artist? Cause bro, I was super like like I was already super confident that I was gonna do it, and I was already telling myself that like I was I was I wasn't gonna be scared to like show my true talent, bro, and show how great I was at this shit. And when I got into that group, that shit just made me feel like I was a part of something. It was like, oh, alright. I'm really doing this shit now. I need to learn. I need to take the time to really, like, perfect my shit. And I used to record, like, every fucking day, like, all the time on my homie's computer. Like, to this day, we still be laughing about it because mm-hmm. I got, like, fucking thousands of songs on that shit. And, like, I, I used to just, bro, I used to record so much, and I was just, like, so much preparation. And So when you first started rapping, like, you you learned how to record yourself? Yeah, because fir- at first I didn't have no resource. I didn't, ha- I didn't know really about, like, studios and all that type of shit. I was just, like, winging it. And I recorded, uh, I uh, downloaded this little recording app called uh, Audacity. Oh, I know what that is. Yeah, most <laughs> niggas know what that is. That's the starter kit right it there. It is. I was using Audacity like a bitch. And my shit, my shit wasn't sounding good. <laughs> and my homie kept telling me, like, bro, like, just come over here, bro. Like, just come record with me. Like, I got the equipment. Like, your shit sound trash. I'm like, all right. I went over so there. Who was that? Who? Oh. The person that had, that, that started letting you let, like, record that and that shit? I don't matter. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, but no, nah, like, he's funny as shit. Cause he's like, bro, come on, like, come record over here, bro. Like, like you feel me? That shit sounded, because my shit was sounding crazy. Like, my shit, I wasn't mixing that shit pretty much at all. Like, that shit was <laughs> you just, just recording. Together. And yeah, I was just recording and listening to that shit pretty much at that point. And, um, yeah, so I used to go over his shit, and I, that's when I really started recording hella, because, like, my shit was sounding clear. So I was like, oh, bad, like, I'm going to record, like, every fucking day. And I was just putting out a lot of shit on SoundCloud, and I was putting out like I had, a, I was putting out a couple projects and shit. Like I had, I had shit going on. Now, and then, how was the like? Was you getting a reaction then? Uh, I was getting like maybe like hundred, like two hundred views at a time. But the consistency is what I think that's what really helped me in my like career so far. Is like I never stopped dropping. Like I never stopped seeing a vision. I never stopped getting better. So it was like. My views started to go up. Like, SoundCloud got to the point where I was only getting like 100, 150 people viewing my shit every song to it being like 350 to 500 to it being like, I'm pretty much getting, like, on a good song, I'm, I'm always going to hit a thousand. You know what I'm saying? And that felt good. Like, that's a definitely, that's a definition of a build up. No bro, kidding. for real. And one of the things I used to always teach myself was, like, I used to play this little joke. Like, I used to be like, shit, if this shit hits 100, like, if it hits anything in the hundreds, then it would be like, a K, like that'd be like a hundred K. Like I'd be thinking about it like as if I was famous. Like if this song oh. hit a hundred views because I don't got no clout, I bet if I did have clout, that shit would have hit a hundred K. Now, if it has a thousand views, that means that that was a really good million. song and that if I would have been on, that would have been a million. You I, know like what I'm that. I like that. I like that. I like I never thought of it like yeah, that. Yeah, and that shit always kept my head right because it was like so I didn't get too stuck on the fact I wasn't getting super views because that shit can kind of fuck with you. Mm, okay. Like okay. for real, that shit. 
That shit could definitely come with you. So was you was you recording when you was in that rap group? Was you recording them or like y'all was just all going to? No, the studio? my homie was recording us most of the time until he showed me how to use it, and then I started recording myself, and then all of us kind of learned how to use the equipment at that point. So we would just kind of record each other or whoever's recording would just be recording itself or whatever, and then. We started going to studios, like shit started to happen. Like, you know what I'm saying? You start putting in some footwork, shit started popping off. Hell yeah. We started going to studios. We started like actually living this shit. And but it just got to the point where like like it just wasn't enough. We just had to do more. And sometimes, you know what I'm saying, like real life still hit and real life is still like it's still uh like it's still in full effect, bro. You're still growing, you still going through regular life shit. So like the balance wasn't there, and that shit is what kind of made that shit kind of collapse. But we definitely was like, we started going, we went from just recording in my homie's basement to actually going to a studio, uh, which is actually Deep Flow Studio. Shout out to them. Shout out. Yeah, shout out Deep Flow. We were down there for a while, and then once I finally. I, well, fucking, I fucking submitted an application to Deep Flow as the work there. They ain't fucking get back to me. Yeah, I mean, they, I mean, they pretty busy. I know the I know the, uh, the, the lady that owned it, though. She's pretty cool. She's a nice lady. Shout out to her. So, all right, so you, that's your first rap group. Did you join another one? Uh, well, right now, I didn't for a while. For a while, I was just on my own tip, and I was just, like, that's when I hit a super elevation point. Like, Let's talk about that. Like, Yeah, so, all right, so all that childhood was all that, like, my first rap group and all that stuff. Once I got out of it, and I was on my own, and I was going through my I went through a lot of turmoil, I can say, a lot of, like, painful things that still hurt to this day, but... That shit made my music go like, like real shit. Like, at, right after I stopped like really being in that group, I just like, I don't, bro. I, it was it's like hard to explain because it was such a transition. Like, I just like something just clicked. Like everything was starting to move real fast. You and was recording the songs. I was fast starting to get, in, I, I was dumb fast, and I was just like, music wasn't even my issue at this point. Like I was just, I knew I was getting like getting good with it, and I was getting real like. Real eat like that shit was just coming easy, and it was like I was starting to get money. I was, you know, doing bullshit and shit, but I was getting money. You know what I'm saying, and I was like, everything was moving like this, bro, just super mm-hmm. quick, super quick. And you know, that's what a nigga love. A nigga love the fast life, but then that shit, it come in and go. And uh, I'm just thankful that I'm still like sane and I'm still here and I'm still like in good spirits and good health and things that I've been through, like. And I'm just not like I didn't let none of that shit stop me from keep going in my career, for real. Okay, okay. So, I uh, so tell me about let's talk about that recording process. Like, like what got you to that point where you was recording quick and shit? Like, uh, re- recording every day. Um, what's your what's your routine? Like, do you like smoke a blind? You need a shot? Or well, I ain't gonna lie, bro. I'm I'm such a heavy. Let me hit that little thing. Oh. I'm such a heavy, uh, I'm such a heavy smoker, bro. Like I smoke all the fucking time. Anyway, like I'm one of them niggas that as soon as I'm telling you, bro, if I had the chance to smoke all day, and anything I was doing, I would be smoking weed, bro. It's just like, I love smoking. <laughs> I felt that. Bro. I, felt I love that. smoking, bro. But when I'm in the studio, my process is I don't give a fuck who's in this bitch with me. I, I mean, I could be by myself or I could have some like my peers in there. It don't matter, bro. I am here to work, bro. Like that's the difference between me and a lot of niggas. I can zone out no matter what's going on i can i'm just locked into what i'm doing bro like i'll do all that kicking it and, and shits and giggles when i'm done recording my verses and we're just listening to the songs and we smoking and shit. that's cool but like i fuck around don't even be hitting niggas blunts like i'm probably just gonna be in there just smoking my little blunt and then yeah. tapping it out and then just keep going because like that shit, i just get like this this charge like and more recently like ever since i started doing that singing shit, i've been like, I look at my notes, but at the same time, I just be closing my eyes, bro, and just, like... You let the song do itself. Yeah, because you start to learn in this shit. You got to feel that shit sometimes. Sometimes you can't always just go off of exactly, like... It ain't going to go as exact as, you're, as you instructed it to. Like, sometimes you got to just feel that shit and go and, like, vibe with how you feeling because that could be when the most best music come out of you. Like, real shit. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. So, I mean, you're definitely right. So... Let's talk about we talk we talking about a good portion of your life when you was a, in the music. Yeah. Let's talk about when you started getting the drip because I give you compliments. The drip is on today. Thank you, brother. Um, I this this is actually a very good question. I love this question. I uh, 
I've been doing, I've been dressing different for like, I feel like my whole life, bro. Mm -hmm. But I used to get laughed at, bro. That's why it's so funny how everybody dressed so different now and all loud and colorful and shit. Bro, I used to get clowned for dressing how I dressed. Like, I used to get really dead ass laughed at, bro. You, like, you was the nigga that wore skinny jeans before everybody else shit did. Shit like that. Like, I was the nigga that was the one of the first, I was, I'm not gonna say the first nigga because it was other niggas doing it, but I was one of the first niggas that used to tie shit around their waist and, Bro, I used to do crazy shit. Bro. I used to always be in this fashion. I used to create my own clothes and draw all over my shit and all that. I was one of the first niggas doing that shit. Bro. I definitely remember that one time I was I was fucking with you. and You had like some jeans that you drew on. Yeah, like and that's what I'm saying. Like, bro, I've been doing this. Shit. I've been like on some fashion shit. I always loved it because that's another way of expressing yourself. Like, it's super expressive. Like, you can literally dress however you want. So you so when the merch comes, you definitely gonna have your foot in it. <sighs> like, see, and that's that kind of like can. Uh, stumble into the next conversation of like who I'm fucking with now and the group I'm fucking with now. See, my homie already has his own uh, merch shit going on, so he's like super supportive and can definitely help me with getting my merch started. I, shout out to the homies. Yeah, shout out to Beeper Boys Entertainment. Shout out to Trap John, El Money, Dreddy, Mo. You know, we locked in. Locked in. I like that. I like that. So, so they're basically helping you like express yourself like it's like now yeah just... bro like they're super supportive like we're all supporting each other and this and this shit but like they see I, I told you when i left my girl i was on my own for a little for like a little while when they found me like they they came and found me like like shout out to dreddy because he really came and found me and when they allowed me to come back come around them and get into their world like what was so different about that world that made you want to stick to them um honestly it was the like what's the word i'm looking for the professionalism, mm. like that shit, like them niggas was just mad, like professional with what they had going on. Like it ain't just with music, like with just their life in general. Like they they got shit, they got their head on straight. You know what I'm saying? They're a little older than me. Like I always say, bro, and everybody, like a couple people when I said this, it's a it's a pretty known quote, but like if you feel like you're the best in the room, then like you kind of in the wrong room. You, you know what I'm saying? That. You shouldn't be in that room anymore, bro. If you, it should always be an elevation point for you. Like, it should always be you around people that are trying to better you or put you in a better position. If you're around motherfuckers that just keep you stagnant or just are doing the same shit you're doing or even worse, just feeding off of you and waiting for you to jump, how the fuck are they going to help you go up here if they don't even know how to get up that bitch? Like, no cap. And then niggas be so mad at you because you be taking these steps and you be trying and trying and trying and they don't they don't they don't acknowledge the fact that you've been fucking trying this shit and falling for so fucking long and now you finally building some solid steps and they getting mad because they still not keeping up and you surpassing them and then you get all the way up here and you get real close to that dream you looking for and you start looking around and ain't nobody there and you look down and them niggas still all the way down there and they screaming at you now because you can't even barely hear them because they're so Hell far yeah. away and how the fuck am i reach you nigga i'm not walking all the way back down there i don't feel like it yeah, you gotta know. You gotta know when it's time. Like, like I was, I, you know how I was with my music. Yeah. I was always on my music. Yeah, you was. When I started feeling like, yo, I think I want to do something different, like a podcast network. And now I'm here. Yeah. Like, you just gonna, you gotta know how to elevate. You one of them kind of niggas. Like, you are a super like personable person. Like, I, I, I met you, you, just was on some like I could, I feel like I could talk to you type shit. You know what I'm saying? Thank you. Real shit, bro. Hey, I'm a pretty That's cool a guy. You are, bro. That's funny as <laughs> shit. The fucking Chris. I, she she don't believe I used to have a Prius. She see the car I got now. Right, you don't even know the fucking Prius. I was clowning this nigga when he put up on me <laughs> the whole time we was in the car. Like, bro, I'm really in a Prius right now, and I was super addicted to Xanax. Oh yeah. So I was just of hella Zans clowning this nigga's Prius. Like, bro. I remember you was like, you was like, I ain't gonna lie, Prius pretty cool. <laughs> I was so fucking high, bro. I was just like, yo, I ain't gonna lie, this shit cool for real. Oh, shit. Cause it was, it was mad cozy in that bitch. I was like. Nigga, I ain't never been in no Prius, like, unless I'm fucking like a white bitch or something, but like, nigga, people moms be having Priuses, bro. I ain't never been in no Prius, bro. Priuses be hitting. She would have let me smack in a Prius if I don't have a Prius. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, no, but talk about that when you was, when, when you, do you still do Zans? All right, we can talk about drugs because I like drugs, but I don't do them anymore. Um, I don't want to, look. I don't you don't wanna, do drugs no more? I don't want to be that guy to be like, I don't do them anymore. I haven't done any pills or lean in like three, four months. That's, that's a really good accomplishment. Definitely. Cool. I had a sound effect. I, it's not working right now. I would have hit it. <laughs> but it's talk cool, about bro. that. Talk about that. Uh, well, I went through some super like emotional shit. Some super like heartbreaks and shit. Like, that, you, like know? you laughing? Because <laughs> that shit just kind of... It, it, it's funny now. 
but oh. I like you know what I'm saying. But like, I, I I'm just a strong. I'm just super strong, bro. I've been through some super crazy shit in my little 23 years of living. So I just be laughing off the pain sometimes because like it is kind of funny how like how emotional shit I used to be, <laughs> especially y'all with drugs. But uh, yeah, I got into Xanax because like I just I had this super tough breakup with this girl, and uh. That was like one of my first like real probably like my first real relationship, you know what I'm saying? Yep. They just do that to you. Bro, <laughs> I got uh I was just super depressed and like that shit was just kicking my ass and like um no, do Xanax you, do just, you remember like the first time you did it? Hell yeah, bro. Let's walk me through what did the fucking room smell like? Oh, what are we talking about? Xanax? Yes. Alright, cool. Um when you said smell like, I thought you were talking about pussy, I was like, oh, No, shit. nigga. It's Xanax, uh First time I ever did a Zan, bro, I actually, first, the, or the very first time I ever, ever took a Zan, uh, I was at a football game, and I wasn't even on a Zan yet. I didn't even break up with the girl yet or nothing like that. I just took one because my homies was taking them, and they was like, bro, you got to take a piece of this bitch. I was like, all right, bet. They gave I, you a half of Zan. And I ate that bitch and was so high, bro. I was at a football game smiling my ass off, just walking <laughs> around and people and shit. And it's funny because it was an away game. I was, I was still in school. I was still in high school. And it was an away game, so we was at we was at some school. I don't even I was so high I don't even remember what school we was at. And uh I was just talking to hella people I did not know, bro. Like I was just sitting I'm on Zan, so I'm just talking like <laughs> Damn. I felt that bro, had a Zan conversation. Zan conversations you talk forever to, to anybody, bro. I was just talking, bro. That shit was so How was how cute. how many That shit was so funny. So bro. so how many what how many like if I say how many times you took a Zan before it was like, Oh, this is my shit. Oh, bro. Xanax made me feel like literally like on top of the world, bro. It made me feel so great, bro. I, I, I love that shit. That's why I, I can't take that shit no more because mm-hmm. that shit, I just like, I got in a super Zan mode. Like as soon as I took that Zan shit mode. and I was just like, I'm taking this shit. Like I, I, I don't know. I just like this shit. Like I fuck with it. And I just was taking that shit like so much. Bro. Like that shit was so dumb. I was so high all the time. Like so many times I fell asleep on so many opportunities. Like even... Like bitches missions, I would just like yo, bro. I've had bitches pull up to my crib, bro. Like and you zanned and I, out, and I was zanned out, sleeping, couldn't, didn't hear my phone ringing or didn't hear them knocking on the door, or texting me fifty times. Like you wake up to hell of messages, like fuck. When I was trapping and I was fucked up, I was zanned all the time. I'd be having like you know what I'm saying, please hit me, and I couldn't like exactly. I I couldn't hit them because I would be so high, I would just be sleep. I wake up like fuck, like you be really missing money, missing all that shit. Like Xanax was a fun time in my life, but it was a Super eye opener for like it was, it was the best nightmare you had. Yeah, bro. The perks too, like, but perks was a little more easier because perks don't make you fucking yeah, perks bug easy. out and forget every fucking thing. But uh, perks too, like that shit ain't no good. Like at least I'm strong willed, so I was just piling bitches because they felt good. A lot of niggas get so hooked on that shit, they become dope fiends and shit. I ain't never, bro. I ain't dog never, food. I ain't never. <laughs> I ain't never play on my nose. I ain't never did no drug. I ain't like that. I don't fuck with her. Like that was all weird. I don't, so I don't do you, the weird drugs. You've been in the situations where the bitches you was fucking was doing coke. Bro, <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about them bitches. <laughs> I've been, bro. I've been in hella scenarios where bitches was doing crazy drugs. Bro, I remember going to this party. This one of the first time I ever seen people doing coke. I go down, I go, I, as soon as I get in there, I go down to the basement, you feel me? I'm like, what the fuck? It like, it seemed kind of like dead in there for some reason, but the basement was dumb loud, but it was a house party, but everybody was in the basement. I go, bro, everybody's down that bitch, I'm talking about just railing shit, like, I'm like, oh, hell no, I straight dip, that shit freaked me the fuck out. And as I got like older and shit, and I was and I was more into drugs. It was like I just I'm not hating on someone else for doing the, their drug of choice. Like yeah, because like nigga, I, mean, I do drugs too. But like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I only seen I only seen somebody do coke like one time in front of me. But like nah, bro, I seen a shit all the time. It's weird. But I just see like I, I can see myself like if I'm hella drunk somewhere, like I can I I, I can see myself getting paid pressed to do some coke. Like I'm not. You, gonna lie. you seem like the type of nigga to do coke. <laughs> yo, hey, yo. You do. You seem like one of them uppity ass niggas. That's going to be all happy, drunk at the fucking party, and, and you're going to do that shit. That's, that's why I never really, like, tried, like, certain shit, because I know I'm a, I got my addictive-ass nigga. Like. Yeah, see, and that's why I don't try shit, because that's why, like, I don't, but, because I like to just dabble and dabble in the fun shit. Like, I like shit like LSD, like, I like acid and shrooms and, like, so you, ecstasy you, feels that's, great. That's, those are the type of, 
Oh, ecstasy's a cool. Ecstasy is a great. So drug. that's the type of drugs you're into now, like the psychedelics. Uh, I ain't gonna say I'm super like into them. Like that's the only thing I do, but I definitely have gotten more into them, and they're definitely hella fun. I like. I don't. I, I like nowadays, I just smoke weed, bro. I just smoke hella weed, and I drink when I want to be a hornball and go out and talk to bitches. You know <laughs> like, if, if, it, if it was some bitches here, I definitely would have brought you get to kill. <laughs> bro, no, I appreciate okay. you, bro. <laughs> I got you. I ain't going to lie. Like, I, drinking and smoking is just cool for me now. Like, I don't need to. Like, all that pill shit. Like, I be thinking about I want to pop a perk sometimes. I be like, damn. Kind of miss being high. You know, you'd be a little sad. You'd be I like, feel that, like, yo. shit, I can, go, I can go numb real quick. I but then you that. think about what the fuck you went through. And and, and and then I also think, like, nigga, I ain't done that shit in this long. It's like, nigga, you don't need that shit. Smoke if, I, if I go back on it now, I'm really not. If I go back on it now, I ain't never going to get off that shit, bro. God damn. That's why I'm not trying to take no Xanax. Like, Xanax, for real, like, no. Like, yeah, them bitches, no joke. They not, bro. I keep telling people, like, people think this drug shit is so, like, fun and, they, they look at us artists and they think that, like, we plan when we rap about this shit. Not, like, bro, it's not a fucking game, bro. Like, this shit is real. Like, this shit, I know people that really went through traumatic moments in their lives and whole chunks of their lives are taken from them. Because of this one pill. Because of drugs, bro. Like, that shit is not cool, bro. We've lost people to drugs. Like, this shit is not just a fucking game, bro. Like, this shit is, that shit is so real. Yeah, bro. It's, it's fun so, being high, but it ain't fun when you fucking die off that shit. So basically, it's sponsored by Dre V. If you take Zans, you're an asshole. Literally, bro. Like, all right, bro. If you take, if you walk up to me and tell me I'm, oh, bro, I'm high. Shit off the Zans right now, bro. I'm gonna literally clown you, bro. Like, get the fuck out of my face. So, so, so you said you've been you've been off of for like what three, four months? Yeah, I'm trying to stay clean. So, have your lifestyle changed since? Yeah. So uh, you got more time on your hands. Well, yeah, definitely that, but kind of less time though, cause now the music shit's becoming like a. I mean, I'll be real. I'm at a point like right now where I'm in this like dilemma phase where like I know what to do and I know what I need to do, and I, I it's just it's so much, bro. Like this music shit is so stressful, cause this is the I I, I feel like. This I'm at that point where the rap always talks about they they were doing everything that they thought they were doing right and they were just about to pretty much give up because it was like God damn I did everything and I still am not like where I want to be. I'm at that point now. So but that but that's what tells me that if I stick it out through this shit and I keep going and I keep fighting, I'm gonna be where I want to be. I just can't give up. I can't quit at the moment when it's the toughest because right now it's the toughest time for me because it's not like. I haven't been doing this shit. So, like, shit don't super excite me as much no more. Like, I'm trying to, like, keep... The only thing that does excite me is making new music. That's, mm -hmm. like, why I keep in the studio so much cause so I don't lose the love for this shit. Because the lifestyle, if you're not necessarily living it to the fullest extent, you get irritated with this shit because it's, like, you be looking around and you be like, damn, my nigga, like, why... Like you be, it be feeling like people like hating or something. Cause like, what Hell the fuck? Yeah. What the fuck could possibly be any reason why y'all wouldn't be supporting me, bro? And I'm... I'm not on no clown shit. I don't. I'm not on no fake shit. I'm being me. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just being myself. Yeah, yeah, bro. I mean, I definitely like me personally. Like, cause I went through that same dilemma too. And when I went through that dilemma, like, I started like started doing other shit. So I wouldn't just have my mind focused. Like, I started doing podcasts and shit. Like, I'm still doing music. It's just yeah. like the pace is slower. Like, I, like now, like I want to say I'm taking a break from music. Like, I just like the consistency. Like, when I'm releasing music, is mm -hmm. not as fast as when I like, right and. Me, I just took a break from social media, which I know I need to be on because social media is a really big part of this shit. Mm -hmm. But I took a break because I was like, bro, fuck this social media shit. I need to get my life together. No cap. And um, now it's like I'm just trying to get music out. Like right now, right now I should have a project out. Like there should be. A, I, I dropped on October first, but I had to take it down. Yeah, let's talk some, about that. Yeah, it was some. It was some complications. Uh, with the name change and everything, and from Simba the, to Dre V. Yeah, and then the the music didn't go where it was supposed to. It went to some other other nigga named Dre V. Yeah, that shit just was like, come on, bro. Is it like it was like it was like spelt the same? Like you spelled? Yeah, it, it was spelt the same. So I'm like, all right, bro. Like that's fucked up. Like, like I just I just want my shit to be out. But right now, so right now I'm going through it with United Masters, trying to get this shit f figured out. I might what I'm what I'm planning on doing is I'm just going give if if, if it doesn't. Uh, get fixed within a timely manner. Like, I mean, it's only been like a week or two, but 
I'm really not too patient with shit like that. Like, if, if it doesn't get fixed within the next, like, week or so, I'm going to just drop something else for the time being. I'm gonna just yeah, give, drop some shit on, like, yeah, YouTube or something. Yeah, I am. That's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to drop some shit on YouTube. I'm going to give people something. Like, I'm trying to I'm trying to keep them interested, bro, because I got this shit going. Like, it's just I'm not super pressing it on everybody like I used to. Like, I used to always want to show everybody everything I was doing, and it's like you got to learn, too, in this shit. You got to start to learn how to move before you even get to where you're going at. Like, I'm starting to learn about being a little more secluded with your decision making and what you show people and what you say and everything. Like, you got to... You can't just, like, get a DM to start telling people, like, yo, Drake about to pull up. Yeah, exactly. Like, you got to learn and move almost accordingly. Like, you got to be able to be focused enough to, to, like, take things like this, for example. Like, okay, we might not be the biggest podcast interview in the world, but... I'm still saying it's the number one in the world. You still saying it's the number <laughs> one in the world. And it's still a learning experience because it gets you ready for when you go do these things so you're not out there feeling like, oh, I ain't never did this shit before. I'm scared of shit. And you like, nervous and shit. Yeah, like, I, bro, trust me, I'm always nervous for anything. But at the same time, I am I already gained so much confidence with myself. I'm so comfortable in my own skin. I'm, like, it just, something just kicks in. It's like, nah, bro, you good. Just go ahead. Just do what you do. Like, you straight. Okay, so so do you feel like this Dre V character, do you feel like when you changed the name, you, like, started a new artist, or you started a new career? Yeah, it's like I got a little more bougie, for real. Like, I ain't gonna lie, like, Dre V, bougie as shit. Like, like Symbol, Symbol was more like, Symbol was more like the, the grind. Like, that was like the, 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 the come up, like the... That SoundCloud era, like that, that real drug down. Three days, three days in the studio, two Zans. Yeah. yeah, like real, <laughs> just figuring it out. You know what I'm saying? Dre V is like, this is the project. This is the puzzle. This is the golden ticket. This is who you need to become to become that next level you're trying to unlock, nigga. Mm-hmm. This is the final fucking level, last dragon shit, nigga. You need to. Strap the fuck in and lock the fuck in. So you realizing like you realizing like as far as like the type of music you're making, the type of evolution you're going, and you realize that it's like you have to take these steps. You can't just stay at that yeah. simba grind. Yeah, yeah. Because if I stay at that same simba grind, I'm not going. I'm not. It's not gonna like. It might pop, but it ain't gonna pop how I want it to. Like, I knew like all right, y- your music is outgrowing you now. So you need to like switch that shit the fuck up. Like you need to come on. Like I was literally having so many battles with myself because my music was literally outgrowing me. Like I was like, damn, like. Like, niggas don't even, niggas probably do get it, but only certain niggas will get that shit. Like, how yeah. I feel to, like, be making such great music, but don't even, like, have your own shit together. So it's like, yeah, you're making good music, but you can't even it don't shoot. even It don't even sound like you listen to it. It sound like you listen to this perfect-ass nigga. Yeah, and it's like, you, you can't even really correlate your life to it. Like, you can't even shoot the videos you, you, you need to shoot for these songs. You can't even move how you want to move. You can't, like, it's just, it's awkward for you as an artist. Like, it's like, damn, like. My music's really good, but who the fuck am I? Like, you know what I'm saying? I don't like that shit. Mm-hmm. I had to boost myself up, and I had to take the time to really lock in, bro. Like, super, super lock in. Mm-hmm. And that shit was like, as soon as as soon as I did that, bro. Now I just feel like I'm good. Like, I feel like I can really. You feel like you 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 yeah. you not you not just hitting the ceiling no more. You bust through nah, that. Nah, yeah. Like I, now I'm starting to see what's on that other side. Like, all right, bet. Like I'm coming. I'm on my way. Like. I, I, could, shit. I commend you for doing that because, like, some niggas, they just give up. They just stop at simple type Th- shit. That's what I'm saying. That's why I said it earlier, bro. A lot of people that are in the position I'm in right now, this is that point where rap was talking about where they could have gave it, they could have gave up. Like, they could have just threw the towel, said, fuck it, I don't want to do this shit no more. That's this point, bro. That's the point I'm at. Like, how long? Know. Huh? Okay. All right. That's cool. I mean,. I feel you. I, I definitely, I'm definitely, because I felt like when I was listening to Simba, I felt like I was listening to Simba's peak. That's why when you, when you change the whole shit, I, like, I, I get it now. Like, I see what you're trying you to do. You see what I mean? Like, it was getting real repetitive. Like, it was like, all right, you doing this, but what you got? Like, did, what you, did you drop, did you drop, like, Simba World, like, since it's not on, like, streaming platforms? Did you put no, it on, like, YouTube and stuff? No, nah, look, so this how my, this how that, this how that Simba drag star shit, like, kind of went to its end. Simba. I dropped Simba's World, then I dropped Simba's World 2.0, which was the deluxe. Mm-hmm. I got this is all on Apple Music. You can find all this under the Simba Dragstar page on Apple Music. It's still up there. I didn't take it down. I I'm couldn't just, find it. I was looking at. You gotta type in the full name. Type in Simba Dragstar, and that's all, all one. All one. Yeah, you can find all these 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 albums. I got Simba's World, then uh, Simba's I'll World come. 2.0, the deluxe. Then I dropped 
Overtime. Well, no, I'm sorry. Then I dropped Studio Junkie, mm-hmm. which was like a, a little like tape. Then I dropped Overtime, and then I dropped the Overtime Deluxe, and then I dropped my most recent one, which I dropped a couple months ago, right before I changed my name and everything, which is Sucker for Love. Mm. And that when Overtime and Sucker for Love were the two albums where I introduced that singing shit. And that's how I got that singing shit popping. Like, Overtime Deluxe is a really good fucking album. And I need to go listen to that. You no do, cap. you do. And Sucker for Love is a really good one, too. And if you listen from the beginning of the Deluxe, all the way through Sucker for Love, you can hear the story. Like, you'll understand some of what I was going through at the time because it's very personal music. Like, real shit. Uh, cool. I'll make sure to put... i make sure to put December Dragstar link in this description in this video. Cause All right, back. I know, I know it's, it's, a, it's hundreds of people that's looking that shit up that cannot find it. Yeah, it and is. I, and I'm, I, you think you just go, oh, go to his Instagram. like Right, and then my Instagram not even that same name no more, you know? And I don't got no Dre V music out right now because I said that complications, but I will have something out soon so people know I'm still here and I'm still in full effect. I'm just trying to make sure that everything mapped out correctly, you know what I'm saying? So we can, everything looks polished and good and, yeah. I, I, I'm tired of being unprofessional, like. So all right, so let's talk. A, let's talk about let's talk about how you got into the singing bag. <laughs> how did you get into the singing? I've been bag? singing since I was young, and I always loved it. Like I always wanted to be Chris Brown, bro. Oh shit! Like real shit, bro. I used to yo watching yo really zap the fuck out on the singing tip and basically be like Michael Michael fucking Jackson dancing. Deep, I, I ain't no dancer. I'm stiff as shit, but. I definitely can sing my ass off. And I was afraid of it for a while. And I thought that rap- rapping just worked so easy. I was like, oh, I'm going to do this. Because it was like, you could poke your chest out being a rapper. You know what I'm saying? You ain't got to really worry about too much of how you sound. Because nigga, rap niggas be sounding crazy sometimes. Crazy. But, but it worked. It, it certainly works. So I mean, like, forty two Doug is a thing. This nigga, this nigga still haven't hit the low. <clears throat> he still haven't done that on his own. <laughs> like, bro, like, bro, like. The singing bag, everybody ain't got that shit. Like, mm-hmm. niggas can fake try to do that shit now, but niggas ain't got that shit in their bag, bro. And I really got that shit. And that shit really gets that pain out. Like, the rap, I can't even, like, really rap my pain as well as I can sing it. Like, because it's just like the, it's just like the melody that adds a whole different aspect. Bro, like, oh my. I remember, God. I remember when you first dropped, like, the first, your first, like, it was like a, you first dropped, like, a singing video. Like, oh. you teased it on your Instagram. Oh, yeah, yeah. I remember when I... I'm like, oh, now I see trying to change the whole bag. Yeah, and like, and I was I was fucking around and trying to fake show people I could sing, but I was still scared. Now it's like, I ain't scared of shit, bitch. Like, I can sing. Like, and that's what I'm doing. Like, uh, I feel bro. like you just need a nigga like Michael Jackson. Like, Kanye West told Michael Jackson he could sing. I mean, Michael Jackson told Kanye West he could sing. Right. And he dropped, like, his whole singing album. So, like, right. Nigga, bro, I really just need, like... I, but what I can say is I feel like I need a resource. Like I need I need some more more resources. Like mm-hmm. I need people that actually believe in me that is in this shit, like super in this shit, that's gonna like push me to that next level because they can give me the resources and let me do that shit on my own. Who's your manager? Um, well, right now my manager is the manager of Beaver Boys Entertainment, which is Dreddy. Mm-hmm. But like even and Dreddy and we we all that's why I said the Beaver Boys we all work well together but even us we're not like super on like so at the same time we still need help ourselves you know what I mean like we still need that extra resource to kind of get us there like you need that one nigga that you can call that yeah like and or, or that's going to call you like bro I got this bit, bit, bit going on and you know what I mean like yeah you really that type of shit really helps people a lot in this shit. Like having those resources, like that couple of phone calls you can make that can really put you in the right position. That shit makes a super difference, like mm-hmm. a super huge difference, for real, like a super super huge difference. Okay, so do you, so was this project that you was gonna drop with Dre V? Was that gonna be like an album? Uh, it's only eight songs, so I would just say it's more like a it's like a fucking mixtape almost. But it it is an album, but it's. I wanted to say it's like a tape because one is not that long, yeah, and two it's just it's just an introduction. It's just to give niggas a taste test of what's coming. Like, yeah, at the end of the day, nigga, it's just shit. You can tell me it's a single, and it could be any song. I would be like, it's a single. Yeah. So yeah, I feel you. That's uh, hard. You got it. What's the name of it? Alter Ego. Alter Ego. Because that's what Dre V is. Mm. You know what I mean? That's why it's so perfect. That's why it's pissing me off that it's not out right now. And you already had this shit loaded up. You had to work. Everything, bro, bro. Like 
I'm. It's crazy. I'm doing a fucking podcast, and this would have been two weeks after that shit dropped. Or it like, would have been hot and ready. It would have been. Like, go look at that. Go look at this fucking alter ego pod, and then I've been like, this is the alter ego podcast, like the follow up <laughs> podcast. Like that shit have rolled out so clean. It should have been clean. Bro. But that's what happens in this shit. Like you can't cry about it. I ain't got no big bad I label mean, coming to save me. So you said. So you said you got eight songs, and you said you, since you couldn't drop all of them, I would just since you got this going on right now, you do like. Drop like four on like YouTube or SoundCloud. Yeah, that's what I'm about to do. I'm about to hit, I'm about to hit the SoundCloud real hard and um, give them, give it to them on SoundCloud so that they can at least hear the shit yeah. and then it can be out. And then for the time being, even if I end up just leaving it on SoundCloud and then putting it on streaming platforms later, at least if I know it's out, it'll stress me less and I can keep working on what I got going on. But I don't know how I feel about that either because you got these songs that you want to like push push and then you gotta want to like you want to put them on like you want to make money from them yeah like it would be like now that i finally got my own producers and i got all this shit going on and i'm that it shit fucking up like yeah on, i don't bro. know because i don't know either because i don't know that yeah. shit's irky bro i don't like, know what i would do that's crazy it's got me bugged out a little bit but i'm not gonna let that shit stress me because everything will work itself out it always does everything works itself out simba the mess i mean i'm sorry i'm so used to calling you simba <laughs> Dre you good, bro. I'm just like I'm so like nigga. I still got your number saved in as Simba, and that's cool, bro. Like you can still call me Simba. Like it, it ain't like I'm not Simba. Yeah. It's, but at the same time, Dre V is who I'm trying to more so become, and I, so I can become more full. But motherfuckers still know me as Simba. I don't be mad when motherfuckers call me that. Bada boom, bada bing. So so like, what's your what's your plans this week? What you doing? Um. I actually, I'm trying to get back in the studio, but not doing too much. I'm chilling because uh, niggas going to Rolling Loud in like two weeks. For real? Hell yeah. New York, Rolling Loud in New York. That shit going to be fun as fuck. Lady. So, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to make some moves while I'm there. I ain't doing too much of shit. I'm trying to just re- literally like relax for a second and just keep my, my head clear. And, uh, I've been super just like in music mode, like just writing and uh, like trying to like differentiate from regular like the regular life and my new life and mm. trying not to fall back into the same habits that kept me in my same old ways like I'm trying to be more efficient with my time and more efficient with the way I think and just like my process of living bro so I can yeah. just really boost up like I'm trying yeah. Yeah. Just, just for me, just for me knowing you back then, and from from how your mind is, just from talking to you now, like I'm, I'm, I, I can't wait to see what's different. Yeah, cause, bro. Like I feel like you're gonna blossom. I feel like you was blossoming before, but like, I was. But you don't got, you don't got no room to stop you. Yeah, I don't have no distra- exactly no distractions. And it's look, I'll be real. Like it's not that I don't fuck with niggas. Like I'm cool as shit, bro. I be chills. Like I, I pretty much fuck with everybody. You know, what I'm saying? I don't, if I got a problem with you. I just don't fuck with you, cause of, and it's probably for a real. It has to be for a real reason, cause if it wasn't some real reason for me not to fuck with you, I, I wouldn't even be carrying you no kind of way. I'd be cool, you know what I'm saying? I'm always cool first. Like that's why I don't be understanding niggas. Like what the fuck is you so mad about? Like a lot of niggas out here is so mad or so chipped on their shoulder, or like just got so much like animosity to people. Like bro, these are the especially for us like artists. These are the people that literally are feeding you and your family, bro. Like. Okay. It, what are you being a dickhead for? Like, and then even when it comes down to, let's say you know a motherfucker and like he he doing a little better than you in this shit. Why not extend your hand to somebody that's truly doing it? I ain't saying extend your hand to everybody, and I can't tell a nigga what to do. But if you see a nigga that's actually working and actually got some shit going on, and you know the nigga, why not? Like, that's how I'm gonna be. Like, once I get this this shit really rolling, and then like, I can't say exactly how I'm gonna be because I might get money and. <laughs> Everything gonna change. Yeah, hell yeah. But I am gonna still be me. I'm still, and I'm not gonna like reject, like showing and lending a helping hand and like helping others to create their dreams too. Like I feel like that shit is a big part of this shit too. That niggas, a lot of niggas forget that shit. That's why I just stick to myself, bro. Stick to my my couple of homies, my little close little circle, and I just move how I gotta move, bro. Cause nah, mm. niggas be mad weird, bro. Like super weird. Mm, okay. Super weird energy, like fucking like niggas act like females. Any, any, any last words to the people that you didn't get to say? Um. Yeah. So, to anybody out there that feels like they're alone or feels like nobody can hear you, and you feel like you're in that dark corner and you're just screaming and you're the only person there, it's not true, bro. 
there's people out here just because their shit might seem a little less fucked up or even they shit might seem more fucked up if they feel the same amount of pain that you do y'all still hurting the same way bro don't ever feel like you're alone bro there's always going to be somebody there there's always going to be a, or at least a way to get you out of what you're going through don't ever feel like you're stuck or stagnant don't ever feel like you got to take your own life to ease the pain that you're going through don't ever feel like you got to run to drugs or run to whatever it is that your vices are and demons that you can't seem to battle on your own it's okay there is help out here and there is beautiful beautiful brighter sides when you just go look for them boom he said it best dre aka simba uh, thank you for coming. Yo, I'm fucking appreciate I'm fucking, it, bro. Yeah. I can't wait to see what's what's what this Dre V is gonna you, do bro. to the world. Fuck yeah, bro. I'm about to change the fucking world, no doubt. Yes, sir. Um, we out this bitch. Fuck Zans, number one Fuck podcast Zans. in the world. Fuck Bye, Zans. Ho. Fuck bitches. Get money. Boom.